minute. Welcome back to the show. How are you doing? Very good. Yourself? Cannot complain. I think the last time I actually had you on this channel, we were sitting down in Toronto. LAX were joining us. So a lot has changed since then. Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, so that was fun. I'm, a lot of fun. I remember at the end, you pretty much turned it into an episode of your podcast completely taking over. And I just got to sit back, not even ask a question. It was awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Good memory. It was awesome. Well, I have to start off yeah. with what I would like to think is my most important and serious question for you today. So when right. will we ever see you release another rap single? Uh, I think those days might be over because when I was younger and I was always in my head, you know, writing down stuff and, you know, you have, to, it's all the frame of mind that you're in, you know, and I'm not in that frame of mind anymore. And I don't really live that life anymore. You know what I'm saying? So you got to kind of be living it. You got to kind of be in that frame of mind. It's a combination of both. You never know what will change and how much has changed over the years. That's why, of course, we might not anticipate another rap record coming our way. But one thing we were right. talking about earlier today were your party days. You mentioned Toronto, absolutely right. loving that. So I'd really love right. for you to just open up about that time in your life and kind of that that crazy little era that you went through, because it seems like you were up to a lot of wild stuff at one point. It already it had already started in Mexico because when I got to Mexico and I doubt you know my history at all but I will say this real quick so when I got to Mexico I was already basically a superstar my first year so I was already breaking attendance records I was kind of like a phenomena myself and another guy that you would probably know who's from Canada Vampiro of course. Let me tell you something about Vampire that you probably didn't know. He's the only guy I've ever seen besides Jeff Hardy that girls dressed like him. I would go outside Vampiro's hotel to get up to because him and Eddie Guerrero stayed at the same place and Love Machine and all these other guys, all the foreigners stayed in the same hotel, right? So I would go late at night into his hotel and there were girls like at two in the morning dressed up like um you know goth thing yeah. you know whatever he would wear they were wearing waiting for him how crazy is that that's actually wild yeah, <laughs> yeah. and so at that time you know i had another i had another type of persona and i was just living that rock star life you know just getting into the clubs getting to the after hours you know everywhere i went i was mobbed so i was leading a very like rock star life and part of that rock star life was, you know, partying, right? So we would get pretty crazy hotel parties, you know, sometimes close the club and parties in the club. And so it was a very, very wild time because as you know, the nineties, there was no social media, you know, there wasn't all the snowflakery you see now. Mm -hmm. Oh my God, I can't believe he said, he said that. Oh my God, I can't believe he's doing that. All the virtue signaling and all the BS, all this woke progressive, which I call regressive, because we're actually going backwards, but you didn't have none of that, you know? And, you know, at that time, grunge was coming out, which was a real cool sound. You know, you had gangster rap coming out, which was a whole totally different sound. Electronic music was hitting the scene. You know, the, there was a lot of stuff converging at the same time, you know? And then you had groups like Limp Biscuit, you know, which was really different, that rock and rap fusion, you know, you had Pantera, which was a crazy group, you know, like there was a lot of stuff happening in the 90s now that I look back at it, you know, so you could really get away with a lot of stuff. It's interesting you yeah. mentioned Limp Bizkit because I was literally about an hour ago watching a video on YouTube of Wes Borland, their guitarist, going through a bunch of new uh, guitars that he was auctioning off and selling. So just weird synchronicity of timing there. But since you did bring yeah. up that aspect of social media there's something that you're that's something you're very open about in a sense of the internet's role in professional wrestling there are so many right. people who think that their opinions matter and we get the messages every day we see them every day and it's really unfortunate because a lot of them pick up traction and people think oh if there's numbers there it must be true and it's so idiotic to me so um your take on it i agree with completely so tell me a little bit of coming from that place of not having to deal with that nonsense to now where it's literally everywhere because it drives me up the fucking wall right well the problem is is that what I've come to learn is, and I'm going to give you a story just to show you the fanaticism of the wrestling fan and maybe even to quite a point, kind of even the derangement. So when I was in Lucha Underground, the executive producer's name was Eric Van Wagenen. 
Okay. Eric Van Wagenen was also a producer on the Celebrity Apprentice, which, as you can imagine, when mm. Trump was there, was doing humongous numbers. Yeah. Right. He was also with Survivor, which, as you know, was breaking all sorts of ratings records at their time. We're talking millions and millions and millions with, with both shows. Lucha Underground, I think on a good day, was doing 70,000 viewers. And he told me that he got more mail from fans of Lucha Underground than Survivor and Celebrity Apprentice combined. Wow. How crazy is that? And what I've learned from these fanatics is that, you know, it's kind of funny to me because I'll give you a good example. I'm a big fan of, as you can see here, the Boston Celtics. I know just about everything there is to know about them. And sometimes I'll watch a game and I go, what the fuck are you doing? But, you know, I'm not at practice. I don't know if the player has a bad attitude. I don't know if he's injured. I don't know if he's uh, his contract's about to be up. There's a lot of things that we don't know about because I'm not in the locker room, right? But these jackoffs who have never been in the sport, never trained, not part of the industry, especially all the peripheral hanger-ons, like all these, you know, podcast producers and, and all these other people that are, are in our industry that wouldn't have been our industry probably like 15 years ago because they would have weeded them out. The wrestlers were like really good at that. Like, you know, uh, and, um, and, and they're trying to tell me that I'm wrong about wrestling. I'm like, bro, I'm in the business. I set records, not to be presumptuous, I'm in creative. I've been in, every company you that you can talk about <laughs> right and you're going to tell me Ugh. you know and that's pretty you know i just ignore them because it is what it is you got to mm -hmm. consider the source right yeah and and at the end of the day what i have learned because when i was young i was very 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 temperamental but what i have learned is that you know anything and this is really something that, that i follow my life by anything that you give control to has control over you the yeah. moment that you finish that control, it's done. It's done. You know, so if you have a dog that's barking and you're shut up and you're pissed and you're throwing shit at him, once you ignore him and you put on the TV and just ignore him, it's just noise. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So it's the same thing with the social media. Who's it coming from? Do I know this person? Am I ever going to meet them? Do they pay my... No. What do I care what they say? Yeah. yeah, it's it's interesting because growing up, it used to bother me so much being a teenager on YouTube, you get these terrible comments. And you actually spoke on your show about a recent situation that happened with me because people thought that my on screen relationship with holiday was real. Meanwhile, you were in the back and saw it. It was right. all, you worked the hell out of everyone. And therefore, when right. I announced this real loving relationship that I have with Maxwell, but no one knows the truth, how mm -hmm. long we've been together, the whole story. And the fact it's my business. And I just want to say how right. much I appreciated you and the boys for sticking up for me yeah. in that whole scenario, yeah. because yeah. it's just baffling the way people talk. It's crazy. But yeah. again, we well, just I've have known to you. no I've, mind. Yeah, well, I've known you for years and I've known Mac a little bit here. You know what I'm saying? And I know what type of people you are. Plus, on top of that, um, uh, people are nosy. People are jealous. They don't like to see other people successful. They're like, oh, look, she's so pretty and she gets this guy and he's hot and she's doing this and she's got her own show. And look at me, I'm here overweight. Well, do something about it, motherfucker. She didn't get that way. She works on it. You know what I'm saying? He works on it. I worked at my craft. You know what I'm saying? So at the end of the day, why pay attention to those people? They're really kind of beneath you. You're on a whole nother level trying to do other things. And that's really what you got to think about because if you let that annoy you and annoy you, you'll go nuts. It's not it's never going to stop. No, I, I couldn't agree more with that. And I'll never forget a conversation that we had backstage at a show. You had told me how I'm going to face a lot of bullshit, a lot of jealousy, and a lot of people will try to take advantage of me, but to keep hustling, ignore the nonsense, and then just succeed. And I always loved our talks because there are so many people who are so flaky and fake, and I found right. another real one, a rarity in this business. So how have you right. kind of navigated those waters over the years with how many two-faced people you come across in this business? Oh. It's very difficult because sometimes they don't expose themselves to very late when it's too late and you've already given them your friendship or 
whatever, you know what I'm saying? And you're like, mm -hmm. okay, you motherfucker, you got me. <laughs> but usually I'm pretty good at that. And I always have my defenses up because I just feel everybody's playing a game in this business. Everybody's trying to you because I'll give you an example. When I'm in AAA, like a lot of people will say, oh, they call me the like, like the teacher. Like I'm supposed to be this all knowing guy. And they're like, oh, teacher, teacher, teacher. And I'm like, they're just doing that because they think it strokes my ego and I want to hear it. I don't yeah. need to hear none of that. You know what I'm saying? And so you just don't know who's fake. And it's, it's been very hard for me because since I always put my cards on the table, and most people don't, um, you know, how do you tell somebody that, for example, my position, because I'm the book of AAA, that they're not as good as they think they are without hurting their feelings. That's kind of an art. Some yeah, people tricky. don't know how to assimilate the truth. I mean, speaking to keeping it real, I do want to transition into yeah. keeping it 100, your podcast. You right. have this right. awesomely badass, no fucks given attitude that I feel like you've had since day one and I've always admired. Right. So have you always been that wildly blunt with people from the jump or did that come over time? You, you always. Have been. Okay. Always, always got me in a lot of trouble, but at <laughs> least, you know, you stand with me. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. You've obviously on the show picked the brains of so many names in wrestling over the years with the show. So who's one mind in the business that you'd still like to have a one-on-one -on -one conversation with that you haven't had on? Well, I haven't had him on, but I have had conversations with him and it's probably impossible to have him on, but it's my boy, Paul Lee. I learned a lot from Paul dangerously, okay. you know, uh, I just think he's fascinating to talk to and I think he's very funny you know and I worked with him in ECW and I thought he was a genius let me ask oh, you a question because you're you're huge into music right yes. um as I as am I um what would you what is your favorite genre don't tell me like everything what is your favorite genre if you had to pick one if I had to it would probably be I'd go decade just full-on 70s music I'm just obsessive 70s obsessed okay, with wait a it minute, and then i know a lot six, about 70s oh yeah then 60s as well like my favorite bands of all time top three would be beatles doors bgs i love my harmonies wow. I'm a sucker for harmonies great riffs wait one minute nobody ever throws the bgs up there that's one of my favorite groups stop Did it you really hear that? yes of course of course i come from the disco era and plus even before that um the nights on broadway and all that stuff but they um they they did a song that I didn't even know existed. It's I want to say it's like three years old. Have you heard this song called Alone? I don't think so. Please look it up. Because you know why? Because the, the great thing about that song is, you know how Barry Gibb usually does the falsettos? Yeah. One of his other brothers is doing it, and it sounds dope. Okay. All right. You know, the yeah. moment that we're off of this, that's what I'm searching. Yeah. And, <laughs> and then hit me up and tell me what you thought of it. I will. I'll text yeah, you I'm after. I'm a huge Bee Gees fan. It's just huge. everything about the shuffle to the harmonies to the way that everything has like everything. that effortless groove. It's just they're flawless. And I've never heard a note, especially live. I remember once my dad was playing this song for me. It was, it was one of the, the, the medley that they do live. And I'm listening to it. And I had no idea it was the live version. And then afterwards, he tells me it is. And I go, get the fuck out. There's no there's no way. because It's just so perfect. Right. But they're one of the only bands that can actually do that. It's wild. All right. If you want to hear an incredible voice. There's this Cuban guy, as you know, I'm Cuban from Miami. Have you ever heard of John Sakata? I haven't. Okay, write this down. Okay, write we're this writing. Down. <laughs> and play this to MJF. He's gonna like this. Okay. And the and the song is called Angel. What's the song called? Angel. Angel. One of the most beautiful songs I've ever heard, and his voice is incredible. He used to be a uh, singing instructor at the University of Miami. He used to be the background singer for Gloria Stefan, who's also Cuban. Okay. And uh, yeah, check that out. You'll like that song. But um, uh, okay, give me some songs from the 70s you like. Let me see what you're all about. Oh gosh, favorite songs. All right, you mentioned Nights on Broadway, genuinely one of my absolute favorites because right. um, when I used to play rock band, we'd do the harmonies triple, like triple and it yeah, was so yeah. hard to hit and we'd always stick the raw ones on on my sister maddie so she'd be like ah, 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 
it was so fun to listen to her. Um, so definitely that love Billy Joel. Um, another one that's my whole family will just literally play him all day long. Um, oh, this is difficult to name. Like my, I'm George Harrison. His solo work I feel doesn't get enough love, but he's my favorite right. Beatle. Um, lots of Pink Floyd and Kiss. Kiss are one of my favorite bands of all time. I could listen to Kiss for no Zeppelin hours. in there. Oh, for sure, Zeppelin. I just, I, I mean, just love that me, era. There's so much experimentation. Let me throw you a couple. Let me, let me throw a couple. You see, if you're a fan of any of these, TV Wonder. Yes, James definitely. Brown. Absolutely. James Brown, Marvin Gaye. Yes. The, so that this is funny because these are the bands that are the artists that Max loves. So we'll literally just right. have mornings where we just listen to Philly Soul or Motown while I'm cooking breakfast and we're just vibing out. Like right. that's that's the scene. That's that's the energy we love. Yeah, yeah. They don't even make that type of music anymore because everything's about suck me off and bend over. Like that was real music. And I'm I serious. Know. No, I know you're you know, serious. That that's like, why I'm that laughing. Was, it's sad. That was love music. You know, that was like shit you could sing to a woman. You know yeah. what I'm saying? And mean yeah. it. And it wasn't just some alternative motive or something really fucked up and sexual. Like it was this genuine sense right. of love. And it's just right. not, it's not there anymore. It's really sad. Right. 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 Well, I want you to listen to that song, yes. both songs, and tell me, give me a, a report. I like this, sucks. You have no taste. Go fuck yourself. <laughs> a part of me kind of hopes it's go fuck yourself, but I literally want some new songs I love. So we'll, we'll see. <laughs> <laughs> you'll like them you'll like them and every now and then i'll send you something that i don't think you've ever heard of please do I'd and it will that. surprise your your ear hole i can't and wait your heart it's perfect right. well the last thing i wanted to ask you about today is the fact that you don't tweet often so when you actually do write something i make sure to pay attention and the yeah. most recent actual post of yours was about your love of bruce lee and how he's the coolest so real quick want to talk is. films with you because your energy gives me action kung fu old school badass film vibes so um what are the films that you can watch over and over the ones you'll never get tired of yeah i like all the bruce lee films because most of them were made in hong kong and i just like the way they used to edit back then and i used to love the scenes when they'd be in the air fighting for a little bit and then they'd come down yeah. you know because there was this there was this chinese theater near my house in miami and it was probably like 10 blocks away so i would walk there every saturday at like 10 in the morning and there would be like about three karate flicks one right after another That's when you awesome. come out you want to fight but when I would come out, it would be full of Chinese people because that's when they would put the Chinese movies with no subtitles. Okay. But anyways, I like all I like all those films. I like all the and I don't even know if you've ever seen any of these. But if you've ever seen any of the um, the old Clint Eastwood movies, like the good, the bad and the ugly. Have you ever seen those? No. So for me, oh when my... it comes to those films, it's like Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon, 36 Chambers, I like Shaolin. That. Those are the I ones like my, that. I grew up watching. Yeah. I love those yeah. films. Yeah. Well, go back and watch some of the old Clint Eastwood Westerns. They're okay. incredible. And if you watch the first, and I'll send you some names if you like. Do you like uh, I, yes, please do. martial arts? Okay. Because there's like the, the early Jackie Chan is not to be believed. He was ridiculous. The early Jet Li is not to be believed um and uh but like the movies that i like to watch a lot i'm a big fan i think i think this is debatable but i think maybe the greatest movie ever is the godfather have you seen that i have and what's funny is it's in my list again so i can re-watch it it's literally the first thing on my netflix um list so when did you see that for the first time <laughs> when i was a kid so I think you I'm going to have a whole it different, per no, it's going to be a completely different perspective, appreciation, not just for the, the cinema aspect, but just storyline wise, it's, it won't be the same. I think I was 12 when I first watched it. So, oh, it's a long ridiculous. time ago. It's a, yeah. It's a must watch. I'm a big fan of uh, apocalypse. Now I'm a big fan of, um, of, uh, what's this movie? Um, reservoir Draw dogs. Okay, I'm a yeah. big fan of Pulp Fiction. Great. Um, yeah. I'm a big fan of Kill Bill. I'm a big Quentin Tarantino fan. Me too. So I probably shouldn't have yeah. been watching them. But again, I was watching wrestling as a kid, like really, really yeah. young. And so I think I was four 
when I saw Kill Bill. I watched it with my parents were the kind growing up. They're like, all right, if you're going to hear about swearing and this shit, I'd rather you discover it with us than on your own. Right. So we watched right. it really young and it just stuck with me before the best of in the best of ways. I, I couldn't. Yeah. I couldn't get the shit that they pulled in that movie out of my head. And the story itself is just so vindictive. I, I loved it. <laughs> I loved yeah. it. What was the last good comedy you saw? I recently rewatched Role Models with Paul Rudd and the dude who played Stifler in American Pie. And that film is yeah. hilarious. It is? Um, What's it called? Role Models. Role Models. Because I remember watching American Pie. Yeah. American Pie is a classic. That's that. Yeah. I can watch that anytime and it always hits. Right um that's awesome yeah I, I like I'm I'm a sucker for Adam Sandler films not all of them but some yeah. Sasha Baron Cohen films like I love The Dictator that film was I loved, off the wall stupid I loved Adam Sandler's Waterboy it's one oh of my, my gosh movies. he's, he's yeah. spitting the cooler like classic yeah. <laughs> also another one Dumb and Dumber yeah it's a great movie um yeah. one of my Elf. favorite lines which one sorry Elf Oh, that's the perfect time of year to rewatch that. <laughs> I feel like I now have this new list coming out of this conversation of a bunch of stuff I need to check out. And it's now my mission over the yeah. co next couple of weeks to do it. I'm really excited. Yeah. Well, if you check out any of those movies, tell me what you thought of them. And if you check out the songs, tell me what you thought of them. And if you like my choices, I'll send you other ones. I'm absolutely down for that. Well, Conan, I want to say thank you for taking the time. You've literally been nothing but awesome the moment I met you. And this isn't bullshit. This isn't, it, it, I mean it. You're fucking yeah. a sick human being. So just thank you for taking the All time right. to catch up. And I hope our paths cross in person soon. All right. Happy holidays to you and your loved ones. Happy holidays. We'll talk soon. Mm -hmm.